Today, more pressure for more people. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one that is post covering finance and property news. Today, I'm joined by Steve from Canstar. Hi, Steve. Hi, Martin. Great to have you back on again. And uh, look, I want to go through some of the latest news with regards to what's happening to interest rates, because of course the RBA didn't lift, but the yield curves are going higher around the world. Uh, banks, I think, are under pressure. So what's happening to your mortgage rates at the moment, both for, I suppose, the existing mortgage holders and also those looking to try and refinance or being forced to refinance? Yeah, we're really at a very interesting point. And I think this is a typical uh, point of inflection in the yield curve. Now, what I, what I mean by that is that it's a point at which uh, you can expect the the, uh, the interest rate movements to start stabilising or turning around. So for the last you know, 18 months, it's all been one-way traffic with downward rates. Uh, now we're seeing a bit of a change to that in that sort of two- and three-year rates are tending up a little bit on both term deposits and on uh, savings and uh, loans. Um, and and uh, at the same time, we're seeing uh, variable rates, some of the special offers for new new borrowers being withdrawn. Uh, so it's it's sort of showing all of the signs of the banks saying, well, let's prepare for, you know, a, a, an uncertain future, a future where we think there'll be you know, interest rate cuts coming, but we're not quite sure when. Uh, and some are bumping some rates up, some are bumping them down for fixed rates. There's a bit of a, a bit of judgment call, there's a bit of catch up being played. So we're seeing this real inflection point uh, where almost the banks are almost saying, look, anything could happen from here and, uh, and let's just set ourselves for anything to happen. Yes, and one of the interesting questions that, that I have is these higher bond rates that are going on. I mean, in other words, the yield curve is going up, right? Now, my theory mm. is that some of it's to do with forward expectations in terms of what central banks are doing. But I don't think we should also overlook the central banks effectively reversing their quantitative easing. So they're actually effectively not buying so many treasuries as they were and in fact putting them back into the market as they run off. Now I think that's another reason why the yield curves are going higher actually across the board and that says signals to me that we could be in a higher for longer environment and with inflation potentially still quite sticky you know look at the uh, exchange rate and the oil price for example and uh, some of the other fuel cost prices um, this could mean that the rates will be higher for longer and and that's going to put potentially mm. more more pressure on people but also the massive uncertainty and one of the things i see in my service is businesses and households are just saying i don't know what to do i don't know which way to turn because you know the future is so uncertain so so this uncertainty i think is another factor that's really driving a lot of decisions or non decisions at the moment yeah, look, I, I think you're right, Martin. No, the, the reserve banks around the, the world had to reverse uh, the, the, the bond situation. You cannot leave it. <laughs> you can't run that forever. That's, yeah. that's a disaster. Um, and, and it is reflecting in longer term bond rates, which does flow through to uh, wholesale rates right around the, the economy and the borrowing rates that banks uh, can actually have to pay for any term lending. So two or three or four or five year fixed rate loans. Uh, now, what does it mean to people? Well, uh, currently, the reserve, the, the big banks haven't really done much about changing their outlook for interest rates. Uh, and they're all saying, look, middle of, uh, of 2024, we can expect uh, the first rate cut. Combank's gone a little, little bit earlier than that as well and said around March. Um, but we're seeing a few of the, uh, the, the big, you know, the big name economists around the country saying, look, hold on a minute. We think that might be pushed a little bit further out than it, than it than, than than previously we thought, and we might see that that first rate cut sort of late in 2024, even in 2025. Now, no one's got crystal ball. There's a lot of different views and thinking out there. Uh, personally, I think it's going to go a little bit later than the uh, than the March Combank prediction, uh, but who knows? I mean, it's it's all about what the numbers look like. And, uh, and look, the Reserve Bank could yet go up once more as well. And, and that would be a, a real shock to people. But I mean, NAB at, at latest was still saying, look, they thought there was another 0.25 coming down the pipe. And, uh, and you know, I, I don't think it will happen 
next month. So I don't think it's going to happen in um, uh, uh, October. Um, but uh, because I think the, the Reserve Bank will probably wait for, wait for the full uh, quarter uh, inflation reading. But it could well happen in November after that's come out. Uh, and, but I think that will be the last. But I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking later in 2024 before we see the first cuts. And I guess that's um, a very important point to understand because we've seen people effectively refinance from very low fixed rates to higher rates, either at another fixed or a variable rate. And I know that you guys put out some research quite recently that showed the sort of total impact on a typical set of mortgages where they were and where they are now and if they go higher what it means and you know the mm. extra money that people are having to find now on a monthly basis well it's pretty frightening really look it absolutely is frightening i mean they're up for uh uh, 40 percent more in repayments 50 percent more in repayments i think it is than they were in uh in uh early 2022 before interest rates went up um 2020 yeah anyway before the interest rates went up uh so that's that's a huge increase to people's repayments and and a, a lot of those people the recent borrowers are actually in technical mortgage stress now they, they're paying more than 30 percent of their income in home loan repayments so that's very distressing any addition to that just puts more pressure on but i think the point you're getting to and then which i absolutely agree with if it is is that um people aren't going to be able to say uh in any time real soon that there'll be an easing in interest rates to take that pressure off yep. That's the real issue that I think people are going to face. They have to do something about it for themselves and cannot just wait for uh, for that time. And certainly, um, uh, wages aren't going to increase uh, fast enough for uh, to fix that. Because if wages increase by that amount, the economy would be in a handbasket and we'd be in terrible trouble. So it says, look, you've got to do something about it for yourself because uh, the Reserve Bank cannot come to uh to the rescue that quickly and nor can your employer yeah the latest data on wages shows that uh, real wages are still going backwards right um unlike in the uk yeah. where in fact wages have actually now gone into positive territory relative to inflation <laughs> though wages are about growing at eight percent and inflation's just slightly below seven point something so i mean it's not not a good look but but this this point about the fact that people were hoping that this was going to be a short spike and then was going to come back down. I see it on my mm. surveys. You know, up until quite recently, people were sitting there with their fingers crossed saying, I know that I can cope with this for a few months and I think rates will come down and, and wages will start overtaking where we are. So in real terms, we're going to be going forwards again. Um, I think that is a little bit of a false hope now. And I think that you're right. People need to actually grasp the nettle and, and, you know, take decisions off their own bat, not waiting for the RBA to save them, as it were, with, with lower rates. Because I don't think that we can wait for lower rates. You know, the, the bus stop mm. might be vacant for quite some time. And whilst the buses might come later, I also have a view that it's unlikely that we're going to see interest rates dropping dramatically back to where they were, you know, unless something really goes wrong with the economy, which would actually be pretty bad too. So we're going to be in a higher for longer interest rate environment. So what can people do then, Steve? Um, you know, if you're yeah. in a situation where the, their cash flows are under significant pressure, they've got this mortgage liability, and now they've got to handle higher for longer. Yeah, well, let's talk about the people who are really under a lot of pressure because they're the guys that, uh, you know, bought, bought, you know, in the lead up to the Reserve Bank bumping interest rates up, bought up to the, their maximum, also bought at the highest prices. So they're technically in mortgage stress. Now, the reason I want to talk about them is that they're the ones that can't do what I'd normally say, and that is refinance into a lower priced loan because that would save you sort of a third or a half of the increases you've seen. But they don't have that access. So here's a group of people who uh, are in a position where they are locked into the loan they've got with the lender they've got because no one else is going to take them off the hook and they've got to find a way of saving money. And that's kind of where it's at. It's, it's all about either... Uh, increasing income coming into the household or reducing payments going out. They're the, the two things you can do. Now, you can do that in all sorts of ways with all sorts of bills. I'm talking about the, the outgoings now. And, um, and 
you think about the big bills and there's massive money to be saved on uh, on well any loans you've got with interest rates but we just said it's hard to refinance when you're in this position but your insurances your utilities uh, your phone bills uh, all of those big bills you've got to look at those and say now which ones can i trim i should find a lower price provider that still has adequate insurance cover for example but that does that for me. But then look at the, the small bills, the, the weekly grocery shop. That's not small, but the weekly grocery shop and work out how I can make savings there. And also look at the discretionary spending and saying, well, look, you know, do I need to buy coffee? So do I, uh, I make it at home? Uh, because that's, uh, that's a big saving as well, because you add up the small bits and you come to a lot of big savings eventually. And, you know, I, I think most households, if they put hand on heart, could say, yes, I can trim uh, some hundreds of dollars uh, from my monthly uh, budget. Um, and I'm prepared to do that to keep myself, my head above water for now. Do I want to do that forever? Well, maybe not. But they're, sort, they're the sort of decisions people are going to have to make. Now, on the income side, it might mean getting a second job or working a, a, an extra shift or some overtime or something. And all of these are hard lifestyle decisions, but it won't go on forever. You know, it will correct itself eventually, but might be a little bit further down the track. What you can't do is just put it onto the bank card, the MasterCard, the, the Visa card, and, uh, and, and, and live off that for the time being. Because if that time being is stretching out to a couple of years, uh, you'll be in much deeper water down the track. Yeah, and it's interesting. The ABS came out quite recently and showed that more people were now working multiple jobs, um, particularly women, actually, mm -hmm. uh, yep. which, which is one of the things that clearly, you know, if you're in difficulty, work more hours or work more jobs. Um, the other point there is that uh, those small savings that you can make can add up to quite a lot but only if you're methodical about it. So the first thing is, of course, you need to cash flow. You need to understand where the money's coming in from and where it's going yeah. out to. And a lot of people still don't actually have the wherewithal to do that, although it's relatively easy with all the online tools that are around you. So it should yeah. be easy to do, right? Um, but then you've got to make the hard decisions. And maybe you don't need all those streaming services. Maybe you can get away with a mobile phone plan that's actually a little less generous. Uh, that There are things that, that, that you can do. And what I'm seeing in my surveys now is that it, it, light is dawning for a lot of these, these people because they absolutely Mm -hmm. want to keep to pay the mortgage uh, or indeed the rent um, so it's about what else can they do and I, I think it's in a way it's a discipline that we probably should have been doing already you know but unfortunately uh, we were in a situation perhaps when we were too busy and it wasn't important enough but now it really is very important it, it's, it's something really interesting has occurred, and, and probably I think you're implying this with your question too, because the um, uh, uh, we've been in a very low interest rate environment for many years now, and you know even before it went right down to around two percent with uh, with COVID lockdowns, uh, it was still extremely low, and that meant that repayments were taking a lot less money out of people's pockets. In the same era, we've seen the emergence of ways to spend money that didn't exist before. And, and, uh, and the streaming services that you just mentioned there are a really good example of that. Uh, they did not exist, you know, five or six years ago, or whenever. Um, and, and those things took off when we could afford it and it was easy and it was only another 12 bucks a month. And yes, you could sign up for three of them and then, then Disney brought one out and you could sign up for another one, et cetera, et cetera. And it didn't sound much money then. But if you've got four of them and suddenly you're up to 50 bucks a month, well, that's getting getting serious. That's a serious expense that you, you know, $600 a year, you can go back to one service and save yourself a fair swag of that. Those things didn't exist. Uh, uh, those and many other things didn't exist 10, 15 years ago. So a lot of, we found a lot of ways in the recent, you know, decade or decade and a half to spend money that we didn't spend before. Now, it's hard to live in this era without spending some of that money, but it just shows that, um, that you know, really, we survived and life was still good, and we don't need all of that. So, if you've if you've run out of budget the way um, uh, you're proposing, and you said I can cut back this and cut back that and cut back that again, and if you still find that it's not tight enough, maybe you say, well, 
what else can I cut? Because there probably is something else that you didn't have 10 years ago that you have now and you think I don't want to live without, but I did then and I was happy then. Now, I know that sounds harsh and it sounds like a, you know, I could get criticised <laughs> widely for that, but, uh, but I think that's where a lot of people are going to have to get to because holding on to your house is such a priority. If you have to let go of your house in this era right now uh, in order to, you know, to, to, to you know, clear a debt, um, it could be 10, 15 years before you really get back into the market. You'd be right back at square one and that would be an horrendous place to put yourself. Yeah, and I also make the other point that, you know, these online s streaming services are a good example of the way you sign up on day one and then they keep taking money out every month, every month, every month. And in fact, you know, if you've got a PayPal account and you've put some over there and you've got some on a credit card, some out of your bank account, you can lose track of just how much commitments you've actually made. And, you know, it just keeps running and running and running. Of course, that's what all these firms do because it's such it's so easy to sign mm -hmm. up and they expect that there will be some um, de degree of, uh, of latitude and the people just go on paying, paying, paying. So it's worth going through and looking at your statements, either online or look at the physical paper ones if you get them, and just go through and say, do I need that? Do I need that? Do I need that? Do I, do I need that? You know, And you've got to be, I think, proactive in terms of you know, turning some of those things off if you, if you need to. Um, you're not going to be able to necessarily um, have everything that you've got, but it's about prioritization. And I think that's one of the things I see in my surveys is that, that people aren't used to making those hard trade-off decisions. Yeah, you're right, Martin. And, but, but I do like the point you've made that, um, that the technology of today makes it a lot easier to understand your financial position than, uh, than prior to this because you've got, you know, you've probably got one transaction account, one credit card through which all of your spending goes. And you can go through line by line. You do it for a month or three months or something. And, um, and if you go back three months, you're probably going to capture virtually every bill you pay and every outgoing and every cup of coffee and all the rest of it. So, you know, it, it's easier to do it now, uh, that, that bit of budgeting now. And the good thing about doing it isn't just to identify the, um, the uh, spending you're making and, and where, you, where your money is going out of the household. It also helps you to say, how do I stick by this? Because you can track it very quickly. You know, it's uh, the day you spend the money, you can see it in the account going out. And, uh, and uh, so it's easy to track it and say, well, sorry, I've got to hold myself accountable and I've got to hold the other people in my household accountable for making this saving. And, you know, I shouldn't have done that and I won't do that tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds like a bit of a discipline and, uh, you know, being adult about finances, that, which is, I think, in the current environment, really, really important. And just before we finish today, um, one other quick point. Credit card interest rates have been rising. Um, e even now. So the one thing you don't want to do is end up with bigger and bigger and bigger credit card bills. It's not called the debt trap for no reason, Martin, and, uh, and nor do you want to end up with big buy now, pay later bills because it will do the same thing to you. Uh, it's easy to say, look, I have $5,000 of unused credit card limit I'll slap on you know, this few hundred dollars worth of, of spending this month just to make ends meet. Uh, because by the end of 12 months, you're up to 3,600 and you've only got 1,400 left. And, uh, and it's less because you've accrued interest on it at 20% on the way through. Uh, so, uh, and, and then one day you'll find that you've got no extra limit and you can't make the home loan repayment plus the credit card repayment. And that day is probably sort of 12 or 18 months for most people. And you're in very deep yoga at that point because that's when it's very difficult uh, to actually dig your way out of the problem. Absolutely. It can get uh, in over your head. And of course, it's cumulative. So the longer you leave it before you take action, the, the, the worse it gets. And I guess this is the, you know, the bottom line. In this environment, you can't expect the central bank to save you. Uh, whilst you can perhaps find some better loans for the mortgage, etc. But at the end of the day, 
financial discipline, unfortunately, <laughs> is the is the way to go at the moment. And um, the good news is that there is still in many people's budgets a lot of fat which can be trimmed, a lot of ways of actually handling this over the next few months or, or even a year or two uh, with the prospect of maybe later a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So really important message, Steve, I think there. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, we look forward to catching up again soon. Yes, Dave Martin. Cheers. Cheers.